So thank you so much, and please help me welcome Joe to the stage. Relationships, but also about improving the communities around us. Three simple questions. Everybody here think they can handle three simple questions? Yeah. Okay, great. Well, my story starts a little bit in the past. I'm going to go back 40 years. 40 years back, just, just a little bit. Not unlike a lot of people probably in this room, I wasn't born in Arizona. I was born back east in a small town in Pennsylvania, a little town called Emmaus. Not too small. We only had two traffic lights in about a two and a half mile radius. We did have a gas station, a diner, a little quickie mart, and a dry cleaning place. So it was a pretty big town for where I was from, right? What I learned 40 years ago came in a way that I never expected. In fact, it didn't really dawn on me until I was much further along in my life. See, I was blessed. I was blessed because I was raised by two very loving, caring, and supportive parents. I know I hit the lottery. And the fact is, they taught me more uh, than I could even imagine I was going to learn. See, I was raised by two very conservative, old-fashioned parents. Now, how old-fashioned were my parents? I'm going to give you a little picture. For the younger people in the crowd, this might be a little shocking, kind of like science fiction. Neither of my parents had ever used a computer. Ever. Up until the last year of my mother's life, she had never used a cell phone. My father had a cell phone. We had to go into his truck, glove compartment, take it out every once in a while, charge the battery, because he never used it. How old-fashioned was my father? This is the way I was raised. He wouldn't speak to a drive-through microphone when he was ordering food. He would make my mother lean across him in the car and speak. That's how old-fashioned my father was. And the house that I was raised in was very conservative, smaller, little ranch home. And at the time, we had state-of-the-art technology. State-of-the-art technology was that long 75-foot cord that you would attach to your phone. Anybody remember those? Okay, see, my mother didn't call us for the phone. She just waited until we popped our heads out of the bedroom, and she would just lasso us with the cord and bring us into the receiver. But although I came from a pretty simple upbringing and, and raised by two very conservative parents, they were both experiential teachers. And it didn't really dawn on me until I got much older how much they impacted my life. See, my father taught me experientially using my hands. He would show me how to do things. That was his skill. And my mother, she taught me in an experiential way on how to think. She would teach me how to think things through, how to impact things, and how to do the things that I would want to do. So 40 years ago, I was 11 years old, OK? 11 years old, I decided I wanted to have, I can't even remember what it was I wanted to have, probably some video game that my parents didn't want to get me, something I wanted to just blow money on. But I said to my mother, I need a job. And I pretty defiantly stood up to her and said, I need to get a job. She said, well, what do you think you could do? And I said, I have no idea, but I know I need to get a job. Because I asked dad, and dad said, you need a job. If you want to have something, go get a job, and you'll earn the money to go get it. So then I went to my mother, and I said, you know, I need a job. And she said, well, what would you like to do? And I said, I have no idea. She goes, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you a little guidance. Great, I figure I'm going to get some master wisdom from my mother. She took a little piece of paper out. I'll never forget it. She wrote down three questions for me. And as I read the questions, I looked at my mother and I said, what am I supposed to do with these three questions? And she said, Joe, I want you to go to all the neighbors. I want you to go right up the road. See, I wasn't allowed to cross the road. I lived on a rural road. We weren't allowed on the other side. But everything on this side of the road, I want you to speak to every one of our neighbors. And I want you to go up there and ask them these three questions. And at the time, I said, well, how is this going to help me with the job? I, I'm, I'm lost. She said, Joe, just do it. If you don't know what to say, just say, my mother came here and told me to ask you, and then read the note. Okay, see, my mom, she was a very, very experienced teacher. She wanted to make sure that I experienced it. My mom was the type of person that would roll her sleeves up and jump into anything. She worked for 30 years at a bakery, you know, making cookies and, and thrilling every little child that came into the bakery. She would hand out chocolate chip cookies. People knew her as the cookie lady in the town that we grew up in. And 
My mother said, just go ask the question. You know what? I did. Every single neighbor, right up and down that road, I looked at and asked those three questions. Same questions to all three people. And I came back, and, and when my mother said, so what happened? Well, I have a job raking leaves up the street at the Moyers, and I have a job, you know, in the, in the fall cleaning out Mr. Smith's garage, and, you know, I'm going to be doing the snow removal for the garage on the corner. And she said, wow, you got a job. I said, yeah, I, I have three jobs. Now what do I do? She said, you go do them. And I looked back over the list, and I still was kind of lost. And fast forward many, many years later, it dawned on me what she did and, and the door she opened for me. Because I never really put a lot of thought into what while I was doing it. Because what happened, literally those three questions, those three simple questions, turned into a part-time job during the school year, summer job, you know, during the off-season, for five years, all the way up until the point that I was driving, I was still servicing my neighbors, the people on the right side of the street, not the left side of the street because I couldn't cross the road, right? But the bottom line was, I was still working, doing the things that came up from those three little questions. And as I moved into my professional career and I started working and, and getting a job, I remembered those three questions and the impact that they had. And those three questions were very, very simple. The questions went something like this. Is there something that you need, something that I could do, or do you need any help? That was the first question. And I thought, wow, how powerful a question that is. Do you need help? The second question, this is really important, is if somebody took care of that for you, would that be important to you? Would that have an impact? And the third question, may I do that for you? So those are the three simple questions. Can I help you with something? Do you need help with something? If somebody did that for you, would that have an impact? Would that be important to you? And can I or may I help you with that? See, the bottom line about building value for people, whether you're talking about a personal relationship, a business relationship, or even in your community, is if you want to build value, you first need to be of value. You need to engage people. You need to let them know that you are there for them to have an impact on their life, to step in when they may need it. Now, I know for some people, those three questions may push a lot of buttons, right? cross a lot of lines, make you feel a little uncomfortable. But the fact is, the best value that you can deliver for somebody doesn't come from you. It's not something that you can give to them. It's something that you have to ask of them. You need to pull it from them. You need to know what that value is. It needs to be personal to them, not to you. And see, when I fast forward through all the time from those 40 years ago, we live in a different world now, right? It's a completely different world. Okay? I like to call the world we live in now Generation M. Okay? Generation M for Generation Me. Right? It doesn't matter when you were born, how old you were. It's all about me. Look at me. Here I am. Look at me. See me. Hear me. What am I doing? But what we need to do as individuals in our relationships, in our businesses, in our communities, is to reach out more. How do you have an impact? How do you build value? First, be of value. That comes from the people that you're talking to. And see, that never really dawned on me until I was in the real world and I was working and I was trying to make an impact. Because the louder I spoke about myself and what I could do and the impact that I could have, the less people listened. But the more I asked what was needed, the more I found out what those people needed, what that business needed, what that community needed, the more impact I could have. Three simple questions. Now when I sit back and think about all that time that's gone over 40 years, we lost my mother in 2015. And as we were spending time growing up in a small community, going around to all the different people that are part of the process when you lose somebody, going to the church and going to the florist and going to a caterer and a hall and, and every single stop along the way for the people that impact that entire process. Every single person that my sister and I spoke to told us a story about our mother. Every single person that we spoke to, that, that two days of meeting people and making arrangements and working on things, told us stories about our mother. And those stories were about those three questions. It was about the time that my mother asked people, you know, do you need help? Is there something that I could do? 
It was the time that somebody remembers my mother just showing up because she had a sense something wasn't right. She was known for having those little six senses. Anybody have somebody like that? I know I do. She was known as being that person that would always be there, no matter what. The phone would ring in our house, and it was not uncommon to hear my mother in the car five minutes later going to somebody's house. And I heard these stories over and over again from people that were a part of our community there. All these years later, and I was hearing this, one person said to me, you know, I don't know if your mother ever told you this, but I was raised Catholic, and, you know, your mother in the bakery would actually bake special Holy Communion wafers for the children having their very first Holy Communion. Special little wafers with a little cross, and I never knew this about my mother until somebody told me this. The florist told me an amazing story about when she lost her husband and what my mother did with her. Now, see, my mother, you wouldn't know her in the business world, and you wouldn't know her you know, on a grand scale in the community, but how do you impact a business, and how do you impact the community? You impact it person by person. You impact it relationship by relationship. And you bring value wherever you can. See, everybody, no matter where you stand, no matter what your background is, no matter what you think you have to offer, has more than you can even imagine. There is more inside of every one of you to have an impact on somebody else's life that you could ever possibly recognize. And all you need to do to figure that out, to take that step, to move yourself down that path, is three simple questions. Now, as I move forward into my professional career, and I, as I did things right, I looked at the things that happened when I did things right, and I realized that it was because somewhere in the midst of what I was doing, I was asking those three simple questions, and everything was clicking. And along the way, over a 30-year working career, I did a lot of things wrong, too, right? And every time that something went wrong or didn't work the way I thought it was going to work, and I looked back at what I did, it was simply because I didn't ask those three simple questions. I lost sight of the fact that it wasn't about me. It wasn't about what I offered or what I did or how I impacted. It was all about what that other person was going to get, what was important to them. The work that I do today is all about trying to help businesses figure that out. And as I sit back and I think about building value in a relationship, whether it's personal or professional, those are all things that all of us should know about the people that are close to us, about our spouses, about our business partners, our friends, our family, people in our community. Do they need help? If somebody provided that for them, would it be important? Would it help them? Would it have an impact? And third, may I help you? Could I do that for you? Could I be of service to you in some way? Three simple questions. As time went on, I, I lost some touch with that. You know, life takes over. I'll admit there were times when I was so far off in the weeds that I lost touch with how simple it was. And funny, it was so easy to get back into that rhythm. You know, it was so easy to remarry and meet an amazing wife and somebody who looked at things the same way I looked at things and, and knew what was important and knew when I needed help and would ask. And the relationships that I established over that amount of time, you know, were priceless to me. Not because of what I did, because it was never about that. Just like it was never about that for my mother. It was about the impact and what it did for the people that we communicated with, the community, the businesses. Building value is all about first being of value. In the world we live in today, things are fast-paced. It's a noisy, crowded world. People miss the opportunity to be of value because they spend the majority of their time talking about themselves. I know, I do it too. We're all guilty. Generation me, right? But guess what? It's not hard. There's hope for all of us. Three simple questions. As I sit back and I look over the years of all the time that I have with my mother and, and the lessons that I learned both from my mother and my father and the people that I was able to be involved with over my working career, my accomplishments were all about the impact. It was not about what I did. It was about the meaning, the value that those people received. And that's the way you should look at your relationships, your business, 
and every opportunity that you have to make an impact. Don't make it about yourself. Focus on the other person. Ask those three simple questions every time you have an opportunity to do it. Don't lose sight of the opportunity that you have. See, the easiest thing to do, the absolute easiest thing to do is to, to brush past the opportunity, right? To skip past it, oh, that's okay, or that's not, you know, I'm not comfortable, or it's not me, or it's not that. You know what, that's probably the exact most important time that you should be doing the exact opposite thing. That's your chance, your opportunity to make an impact. Those things are lining up in a certain way, and when you feel that discomfort or that uncomfortable feeling in your stomach or that little bit of nervousness about, I wonder if that person needs something, I wonder if that person could use some help or a friendly ear or something like that, that's the time for three simple questions. When I look at what's gone on in my entire life, I, I think of wondering what impact it's had. Now, I had, the, I had the honor of giving the eulogy at my mother's funeral, and I couldn't think of what to do and how to present this amazing woman at, at her funeral. And it boiled down to a simple thing. It boiled down to me saying, you know, it wasn't about her. It was never about her. She would, she would be angry at me if I made it about her. So you know what I did is I turned it all around, and I said... Here are the things that she was about. Here was the impact she had. And I told the stories. I didn't use people's names, but I said, look, when we needed a shoulder to cry on, she was there. When we needed somebody to believe in us, she was there. And I did the eulogy that way because that was what she was all about with three simple questions. And I always wondered how far the stories went and and how it permeated through the little community that we lived in and, and where we were. And I never really had an answer to that question. And through that very difficult time of losing my mother and, and experiencing all that, we were lifted by those, those amazing stories. And I still think of them, an impact. And I didn't even know it. I didn't even know that about my mother, other than my own little world, because I was so focused on it, right? And hearing the impact that she had, the people told me such amazing stories. And the one that really set me off was simply because I never saw it coming. I don't know if anybody's ever been in this situation, but there's this awkward silence when you lose somebody very close to you. My father was still alive, still alive today, and I was blessed to be there around him trying to keep him going in the right direction after we lost my mother. A couple months later, I was at his home, just going through some stuff, just trying to be a support to him. He was actually up at his business on his way back down. And I still remember this, clear as day. There was a knock on our door. And I went to the door, and it was Michael. Michael lives two doors up from where my parents live. He was, at that point, about 14. This was back in 2015. And Michael was standing there. Now, Michael is the son of a young lady named Bonnie. Now, Bonnie, never told this part of the story, but Bonnie babysat me. <coughs> when I was up until about the point that I demanded to no longer have a babysitter, whatever age that was, right? <laughs> Bonnie babysat me, and she moved away 25 years, started a family, and she lost her parents two doors up from mine. She came back, and she bought her parents' home, and she moved into her parents' home with her son, Michael, and her husband. So Michael is knocking on the door, and I answer the door, and I say, hey, Michael, how are you? And he looks at me, and he says, Mr. Beck, is there anything that I can do to help you? And I stopped for a second. I catch my breath. And I said, you know, Michael, there's a lot of things you could do to help me. You could help me rake some leaves. You could help next door. There's a bunch of things that you could do. And he said, if I was to do that for you, Mr. Beck, would that be helpful? And I was starting to choke up when he said that. And I said, yeah, Michael, it really would be. And then he said, can I do that for you? And I stopped dead in my tracks. And I said, Michael, I don't know where you learned that. Do you remember where you learned that? And he said, my mother taught that to me. Three simple questions. Thank you.